God, injuries suck. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Week 14 NFL Power Rankings show. We're going to dive right in here. Please do hit that like button. It really does help me out. I appreciate it. It takes just a second. Here we go. Starting at the bottom, we've got five tiers here today. And the bottom tier, of course, is the genuinely terrible tier in order. Panthers, Patriots, Giants. I have no words for you guys this week. Hope you're enjoying your way too early mock drafts. No movement for the bottom three teams there, but I am renaming this tier four here that has been the NFL middle class for several weeks, Uh, but many of the teams that have been ranking in this tier have graduated up to that playoff caliber tier, and kicking off this tier are going to be the, by definition, frisky Tennessee Titans, and uh, you know, climbing out of that bottom tier. They beat the Panthers a week ago and very competitive this week against the Colts. I mean, this season is all about Will Levis and continuing to have his comfort within this offense and with these receivers grow and his comfort in the NFL grow, uh, which isn't easy for this team considering their offensive line is so bad. But he is the quarterback of their foreseeable future. He's shown a ton of promise, definitely looks like a quarterback that should not have gone as late as he did. And uh, yeah, he's he's exciting, man. He made a lot of really nice throws this week uh, to keep them in that game against the Colts. Uh, despite a brutal special teams performance. Uh, But then we have the New York Jets continuing their fall. And, you know, I've run out of words to say about this offense. It's arguably the worst in the league. Um, The defense is going to keep them in games, blah, blah, blah. This has turned into really looking forward to next season. Uh, If you're a Jets fan, that H word, uh, the hell that you're living in, can maybe turn into a different H word of hope. Uh, here in a couple of months as this team is quietly encroaching on like a top five to six pick maybe that could be a tackle uh, to help keep Aaron Rodgers healthy you know this team could very well get right back to the top next year but um, they're gonna have to stomach the rest of this season as it definitely feels like uh, they're gonna be shutting down the uh, discussions about bringing Aaron Rodgers back uh, this season Then we got the Chicago Bears on by this week, staying put at number 27. Nothing new to add on them. And then at number 26, the Arizona Cardinals. I mean, this is why I've had them in this tier and not in the bottom tier really since Kyler got back. We saw again this week, Kyler is a good plus NFL quarterback and is going to make some plays and keep you in the game. But this week was different. I mean, this week, you know, Kyler did some stuff and Trey McBride was awesome. And some of these playmakers made some stuff happen, but man, like the run game and the defense in Pittsburgh against the team that like, that's their bread and butter is out physicaling you every week. I mean, the Arizona Cardinals under Jonathan Gannon with this motley crew defense, took the fight to Pittsburgh, and I just think that it's super impressive playing hard, playing frisky, if you will. Uh, They're just, they're continuing this trajectory where no one's taking them serious right now, and you shouldn't, Um, but that can lead to some upsets, and it's, it's building something that could turn around rather quickly, in my opinion, heading into next year, Um, because I think the culture is somewhere that it never really has been in the Kyler Murray, Cliff Kingsbury era. And then at number 25, the Washington Commanders. Look, you you scapegoated the defensive coordinator last week, and Ron Rivera comes out with arguably the worst defensive game plan I've ever seen against Tyreek Hill. I mean, if you needed any more evidence that Ron Rivera is not going to step in and fix this defense, there you go. Uh, This is heading in the wrong direction. Sam Howell should be their starter next year, but how good do we feel about that? How consistent can he play? This team just has a lot of work to do, man. They're falling kind of by the wayside here at the end of the season. And then the Las Vegas Raiders are going to jump up a spot on bye week this week. I just, I think if they played Washington on a neutral field this week, I think the Raiders would win off of their defense and physicality. I think they're in a better spot right now as a team, but that's not saying a whole lot, but... Hey, a good bye week to climb up a spot, I suppose. Not really any paid promos here this week, guys, but I do want to remind you guys I have a podcast if you enjoy my analysis. That's the Fully Inflated Football Podcast. You can find that here on YouTube. There's a link in the description below or just search Fully Inflated Football Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, But yeah, weekly game recaps, answering mailbag questions. 
Uh, go check it out. And then also come back here every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time for my live show, Hot Routes, with Matthew Caller, where we tackle five heavy-hitting NFL topics every Tuesday. Uh, so just wanted to let you guys know about where else you can find some of my uh, content, and let's get back to it. At number 23, I've got the New Orleans Saints. And I know Saints fans are tired of me talking about how this team never should have signed Derek Carr every week. And I'm tired of talking about how this team shouldn't have signed Derek Carr every week. And hey, this team shouldn't have signed Derek Carr. They're stuck in purgatory. They get kind of boat raced early by the Lions. They fight back, but it was too little too late. I mean, I mean, where the hell is this team? Uh, I, I just, I'm out of words. I'm out of words, Saints fans. I'm sorry. Uh, number 22, the Tampa Bay Bucks, Picking up a win against the worst team in football this week. Wasn't even really pretty, uh, but Baker continues to make big throws to Mike Evans. And hey, they're 5-7 and seven in a game out of first place in the incredibly unsatisfactory NFC South. Number 21, the Minnesota Vikings. A much-needed bye week here to stunt their losing streak here. And this comes down to how much do we trust Josh Dobbs, uh, you know, beyond his first couple of starts with a team, right? Like we saw this in Arizona. We've now seen it in Minnesota. Uh, teams haven't, for one reason or another, really trusted him throughout his career. It, it's just a very fascinating storyline to follow the rest of the year. I enjoy Josh Dobbs. I think he's talented. I think he's a great dude. He's obviously smart with the aerospace degree and all that. Uh, but look, the dude's played really bad football now for two straight weeks, and he's got to take better care of the football. He's got to play on time. And if he's playing like he's played the last couple of weeks, this team is frisky but unserious and is probably going to uh, unfortunately lose that seeding that they currently hold as the seven seed in the, um, in the NFC or the, the six seed right now. And then the Cincinnati Bengals at number 20. You know, I'll give them a tip of the cap. They were very frisky here uh, against the Jacksonville Jaguars before the Trevor Lawrence injury. Would they have won the game if Trevor was in there? You know, tomatoes, tomatoes. Uh, the week before, they weren't so frisky. But um, I do think Trey Hendrickson looked a little bit more healthy. That's huge for the defense. And a, a tip of the cap to Jake Browning does look like he is a very competent backup. I thought he played well against the Jags. Um, need to see more before I say, okay, you know, they're doing a great job and they could be a legitimate playoff team or anything. But this was a step towards that, I suppose. We'll see where it goes for for the, the Bengals. Then we've got the Atlanta Falcons at number 19, who, hey, they, they pick up their second win in a row coming off the bye week. They're in a, a pretty good spot in terms of the NFC South. And you might say, hey, why don't you put them in the playoff caliber tier? Because they're in the playoffs right now. I'm not willing to give that to a team just because they're in this laughing stock of a division. This team still has a long way to go. I don't think their offense looked good this week. Granted, against a really stout Jets defense. And, you know, how much do you take away from their defense playing well against the Jets offense? It's, it's just... You know, good good job scraping by with a win. I think Arthur Smith did put together a decent enough game plan, but it only give you 13 points. So, you know, congrats on holding on to first place in the NFC South, I suppose, Atlanta. Um, then we have the L.A. Chargers at number 18. Look, they win in New England, covering a five-and-a-half-point spread, scoring six points. <laughs> um, yeah, what the hell was that? Uh, they, they actually quietly have a receiver problem right now uh, it's the second time in three weeks that they've got like chiefs-esque drop issues and it's not just quentin johnston it's really everybody uh just can't seem to hold on to the football maybe herbert throws it too hard i, I don't know uh, for what it's worth brandon staley has this defense playing better the last couple of weeks uh but I'm, I'm not you know after scraping by against the patriots it you know i'm not ready to give this team a lot of credit uh, and boost them up a tier or anything like that. But, hey, you, you picked up a win. Good job, Chargers. All right. We got through that tier. It's uh, it, We are in the dog days of the season trying to talk through those teams every, every week. But uh, we made it. We made it until next week. Um, now we get to get a little bit more excited. Wipe the sarcasm off my face and uh, celebrate some teams, honestly, that are playing really good football, climbing up into this playoff caliber tier. And the first one is going to be the Indianapolis Colts, who 
you know, ironically are going to drop down one spot in the power rankings, but that goes to show you, you know, it's not all about that number placement. That's why we do the tiers, and they're climbing up, in my opinion. I mean, they have really strung together some impressive football. They are incredibly well coached, dialing up some great plays again this week. I'm just scheming guys open, creating chunk plays, even though they don't have the most explosive group of weapons in the NFL. Their D-line is playing really well as well. Um, but how about Gardner Minshew, man? I, I, I can't believe I'm sitting there watching this game and he played pretty well against the Titans. One bad red zone kind of strip sack. And, and that's kind of what Gardner's going to do, right? He's going to have maybe one or two ugly plays a game. Uh, but I'm sitting there like, man, I've always been such a Gardner Minshew guy, yet this season I haven't really celebrated what he's doing for the Colts. And he's playing really good football. I think he's showing exceptional pocket presence. He's showing command of this offense. He's technically in year two of this scheme, following it over with Shane Steichen from Philadelphia, getting guys like Alec Pierce involved. Kylan Granson, big games this week. I mean, they just, they make plays, man. They're smart, and I, I got to bump them up, man. I'm really impressed by the Colts, who at this point just might make the damn playoffs at, like, a very legitimate 10-7. and 7. And that's crazy, considering this was a, you know, experimental season. Uh, can't wait to see what this team looks like with Anthony Richardson. And Gardner Minshew is a top 32 quarterback in the NFL. He could be an answer for somebody maybe like Atlanta or something. Um, but maybe not quite as excited about our number 16 team here, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, don't fully know what to do with them. Uh, you, you know, Kenny Pickett's going to miss some time, but how much does that really hurt them? I don't fully know. It's not like Pickett was shredding the Cardinals or anything um, before he got hurt. Uh, we'll learn a little bit more about this on Thursday Night Football. At the end of the day, I, I just think the Steelers didn't show up, physically speaking, against the Cardinals. And I don't expect that to continue. So I'm not panicking about the Steelers. But, I mean, come on. This this team really struggles to score. I don't love their secondary. They're a very imperfect 7-5, and five, man. And then the Browns at 15... You know, honestly, I, I didn't think Flacco was horrible, and their offense is their offense, right? But with Miles Garrett's injury, this defense all of a sudden becomes a lot more, I don't want to say average, but it's not that world-beating offense. And the Rams just dissected them this week. Puka Nakua just remains insane. But this is about the Browns, and week to week, I mean, 15 feels right, because what the hell are the Browns week to week? Because they, they've had this legendary defense, but they've now had like three or four games where they're getting diced up and giving up like 25, 30, 35 plus points. And it just it doesn't really make sense. The Browns don't make sense. They have so many injuries. Really tough to know where to put the Browns, what they're going to be any given week, and where this is going to end up as the season moves forward. We're just going to have to wait and see. And then the Seattle Seahawks at number 14. Really frustrating week when the offense plays like that against a Cowboys defense on a short week in Dallas. Geno, DK Metcalf, Zach Charbonnet, uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba. Like on one hand, you're saying, great, the Seahawks got their mojo back offensively. But then you look at what's happening on the defensive side of the ball, and how can you not be frustrated, man? They traded for Leonard Williams. They're in a slump. Their defense is, God, I don't know, the 22nd best defense in the NFL, if that. And they have talent. That's what's so frustrating. I mean, I love Pete Carroll, but it just, it doesn't, it's not working, man. You're not recreating the Legion of Boom or anything close to it anytime soon with him and whoever is under him as the defensive coach definitely don't think clint hurt is even a top 25 defensive coordinator in the nfl today they're a collection of talent on that side of the ball that can't put things together so um one hand you're happy about the offense the other hand it's like this this is unacceptable and we saw that schedule heading their way, saying it could be trouble, and they are in trouble, to say the least. Uh, currently sitting outside, looking in, in the playoff picture with some challenging games still to come. 
But on a more positive note, sticking in the NFC West, the LA Rams up to the number 13 spot in my power rankings. Um, I kept them at number 17, I think, when they were 3-6, and six, set to get Matthew Stafford back. And man, I'm glad I did that because they have quickly reminded us that they're like a borderline juggernaut offense this year when Matthew Stafford is out there healthy. He's been slinging it. I mean, the Puka emergence has been remarkable. Uh, the run game with Kyron Williams, you still got Cooper Cup. Obviously, McVay calling plays. Like, this is just a straight up great offense, not even just a good offense. Like, this is a playoff caliber offense, hands down. And defensively, look, they've been really scrappy. Raheem Morris, Aaron Donald, and company doing a pretty good job there. So they they hit their slump there with the Stafford injury, um, but just really impressed with how they've responded and, and gotten their season back on track. They've got a stretch of tough games coming up, um, not necessarily back-to-back, -back, but they do have to play the Ravens and 49ers still. Uh, so they're far from through the woods, but this is a team that I would not look forward to playing. And if they could get in, I think could play spoiler against a lot of teams. And then sticking on a positive note with the Green Bay Packers, who have just been a completely different team in the last month. I mean, I had them as low as number 29, and I very much think they deserved it. Offensively, they couldn't get anything to work. Uh, Jordan Love was trending in the wrong direction. The defense had Joe Barry problems, and now it's just rainbows and freaking butterflies, man. I mean, what is left to say? You obviously start with Jordan Love. The Packers can't keep getting away with it, right? Like, that's what everybody keeps saying, and, you know, maybe they did get away with it. Turns out, if you draft a good prospect, have good coaching, and give them three years to grow, it's a pretty good process to find another franchise quarterback. But it goes so much far uh, further beyond that. I mean, the offensive line is shaped in. Christian Watson... Post Thanksgiving, Christian Watson again this year has just been mossing guys all over the field. And man, the defense look, Joe, Joe Barry. I did not think I'd be sitting here like even giving the, the least amount of praise to Joe Barry, but he's got that defense playing together and doesn't feel like an issue for for them right now i mean they're out there with a bunch of backup guys in the secondary playing great so i don't know if he's the long-term answer as a dc but he's at least not holding the team back this year and matt lafleur is doing i think the best job as a play caller he's done since he's been in green bay just hitting all the right buttons at the right time the play action game has been awesome so, like, where are the real weaknesses with the Packers? It's the run game, but Aaron Jones could be back soon. It's maybe the secondary, but Eric Stokes, Jair Alexander, Rudy Ford should all be back soon. So, this is a playoff caliber team. I mean, I don't even know how you argue with that. They've just beaten Detroit and Kansas City back to back. Um, again, rainbows and butterflies for the Green Bay Packers. And with their schedule coming up, by the way, I don't see it slowing down this season. Then we got the Denver Broncos at 11. And, you know, obviously the winning streak comes to an end and the kind of hype train has been halted. But it, they were right in it against Houston, man. In, in Houston, a chance to win late. They fell short. It really felt like at the end there they were going to pull it out. And I just, I really just don't feel differently about the Broncos this week than I did last week. I think they're scrappy on defense. I think they have a really good plan, good coaching, and a good offensive line offensively. Um, th this week, Russ was kind of running for his life. That has not been the case for five weeks. Uh, we'll, we'll see if that is a recurring issue or if that was just a random week of them losing their matchups. So it's something to keep an eye on. Um, but again, nothing I'm terribly worried about. I still think this is a good football team, a playoff caliber football team, but uh, they obviously have their own issues too that we know about. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to slam the Broncos for losing a tight game in Houston. And then Houston is going to stay at number 10 fitting. I mean, these teams were pretty neck and neck. I uh, just continue to be so impressed by the whole operation in Houston. It does suck for them that Tank Dell got hurt uh, just for obvious reasons. We'll see how they respond to that injury. Um, but I don't think they showed enough to jump any of the teams ahead of them. Uh, though, as we'll talk about Jacksonville shortly, uh, that division could be opening up for Houston, which might mean they don't have to necessarily 
um, scrap for a wild card spot, they might just get in in the division. So that, it's a, a new opportunity potentially, depending on what the Lawrence injury looks like. Um, and then. Lions fans, I'm going to take you out of the Super Bowl potential tier. Um, And it's the defense. It's just the defense. The secondary has been getting brutally picked apart. Um, I don't like their pass rush outside of Aiden Hutchinson. And as good as the run game is and as good as the coaching is, I just don't love how this team against good teams find themselves in shootouts every time. Now, I will give them credit in that the the whole like kneecap biter mentality bit is so much more than just a bit like they very much theoretically should have come off the the long week after getting embarrassed by the packers on thanksgiving theoretically they should have come out pissed off physical stomping the saints and they did um but as the game went on their defensive deficiencies caught up with them right um and their offense stalled a little bit um so i just this is a very good football team. They're at the top of the playoff caliber team, and they should still win a playoff game. But can I put them up there with the real Super Bowl teams right now? I, I can't. I just can't. And you look at their schedule, too. Like, I know they went into Arrowhead and won, but we all saw what, saw what happened with the drops. You know, the Chiefs are a much more vulnerable team than uh, we thought they were at the time. Not to mention there was no Chris Jones, no Travis Kelsey in that game. I'm sorry, Lions fans. It was an asterisk win. You look at the rest of their schedule. Where's the good win, right? It it's not there. Atlanta at Green Bay, I I suppose, is their best win when Green Bay was reeling and and went and lost to the Raiders the next week. Like, okay, Carolina, Tampa, Raiders at the Chargers. I guess forty-one to thirty-eight. Again, the defense an issue. Bears. Saints like where's the where's the signature win other than the Chiefs game that was such a weird game they've lost to the Seahawks 31 to 17 uh 31 to 37 they've lost to the Ravens 6 to 38 uh, they lost to the Packers 22 to 29 after scoring a garbage time touchdown I, I think this is a very fraudulent 9 and 3 team and I know Lions fans hate me I'm just being honest, man. I love the Lions. I had money on them this week. I was loving them. I was tweeting about them. Um, But I'm just trying to be honest, man. I I think this team still has a long way to go before they can reach that real Super Bowl opportunity. And it's got to start with better corners, better pass rush, you know, like critical game-changing players, especially on the defensive side of the ball. It can't just be Aiden Hutchinson and everybody else. Aiden Hutchinson's a really good player. He's not Miles Garrett, right? And even Miles Garrett is a great surrounding cast of defense around him. So um, there's my Lions spiel this week. I'm sure Lions fans are going to freaking come at me and roast me as a big Lions hater or anything. Um, But I just look at this next tier being the Super Bowl potential tier. Like, do I really think the Lions have Super Bowl potential at this point in time? No, I don't. Now, for for what it's worth for the Lions, um, they potentially could get a plus one in their overall ranking um, even though the tier wouldn't change depending on the news that we get here from my number eight team with their quarterback trevor lawrence and you know i'm i'm praying for the best sometimes those ankle injuries can look worse than they actually are um sometimes they're just really bad so praying for the best that it's like an ankle sprain and the Jags can survive this thing and get back into the playoffs and, and make some noise because I really think they can. I was hyping them up all week. Those that follow the podcast were like, hey, yeah, why not the Jacksonville Jaguars? And I really don't think they lose that game down the stretch without the Trevor Lawrence injury uh, sucking the life out of that entire team. And then they're sitting here 9-3 and three and rainbows and butterflies. Um, that's obviously not where we're sitting right now. They just picked up a loss against the Bengals, but the bigger loss could be that of their starting quarterback. Um, I put the number 22 there. Looking at these power rankings, I think that's where I would slide them between the Vikings and the Bucks uh, with C.J. Beathard in there. Um, You know, a scrappy team without Trevor Lawrence, but, I mean, they need that superstar quarterback in there. If they're going to be a playoff team and, a, and certainly a Super Bowl caliber team, as I had been kind of talking them up as uh, having that potential the last couple of weeks. So we'll, we'll see. Praying, praying for the best. And, you know, by the time 
this video posts, we, we might have that news. So I wanted to, um, you know, play play both sides of the coin there for, for the Jags. Uh, but the Buffalo Bills are going to come in at number seven on the bye week here this week. I think they're kind of a sleeping giant, man. I've been hard on the Bills uh, really f- since the offseason, and they very well might still miss the playoffs. But uh, with some of these quarterback injuries and the way the rest of the AFC is losing, it's really starting to look like they might get in. And they're playing really good football since they fired Ken Dorsey. I think Josh Allen is quietly playing the best quarterback in the National Football League this year. Uh, a sneaky MVP candidate if the Bills can go on a hot streak and, and get this thing done. Obviously, you wish they pulled it out late against the Eagles last last week. But, um, you know, they're, they're legitimately one of the best offenses in the league, can beat anybody at any given Sunday. And uh, I, I feel pretty good about how they have a, have a chance to, to finish the season here, even if I'm worried about their defense a little bit. Then we got the Dolphins at number six. Uh, you know, bringing back the fireworks a little bit. It was, you know, we needed that a little bit to feel better about the Dolphins' offense. It, you, you can get some feel-good weeks going against a Ron Rivera defense, though. So I, I don't know how much to put into that, but, you know, Tua uh, took care of the football this week, which has been a bigger issue for him lately. Tyreek Hill blowing up out there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, great good week for the Dolphins with the AFC starting to crumble a little bit around them, and they're kind of staying the course. It's just a battle of attrition, man, in the AFC. Um, the Kansas City Chiefs got to come down, man. They're dropping down a tier. They're dropping down two spots. They're no longer, for me, the best team in the AFC. And, you know, once or twice you, you have some drops and some poor offensive performances, and you can look at it and say, um, you know, they'll be better. But it's December 5th, and they don't have talented wide receivers. They continue to make mistakes. I mean, the, the interception late in the game, you know, Sky Moore just stops running his route. And I look at the guys on paper, and I just I think this is a collection of guys that are going to continue to make mistakes, right? Tony has all sorts of issues. Uh, you got Sky Moore has just not come along. I like Rasheed Rice, but he's a rookie and certainly hasn't emerged as, like, a true number one wide receiver, Kelsey himself has been far from bulletproof. Um, man, they're just they're putting way too much pressure on Patrick Mahomes right now, and you know they're they're still a great team. And a lot of weeks, Mahomes is going to make enough plays, but you know they're not getting those big chunks like Miami, for example. Miami can afford to throw a pick at the fifty yard line or fumble a ball because. On the next possession, it could be one pass, and Tyree Kill just makes up for it. The Chiefs don't have that. If you make that mistake, it compounds very quickly, and we, we've seen that now in basically all of their losses, but now with four of those losses, that could happen any given week. They're a very beatable team. Um, they just can't make mistakes. And, yeah, I mean, I still believe in them, but they got to come down. They just do. And then at number four, the Baltimore Ravens, who got to just kind of sit back and watch the rest of the AFC crumble into pieces this week as they climb to the top spot in the AFC. Uh, And then the uh, Dallas Cowboys at number three, storming back against the Seahawks. I I don't really know what that was from their defense, a very uh, polarizing night from Deron Bland, I'll say that. Uh, after the incredible season he's had. But, you know, a lot of big plays, a lot of big DK plays, the big JSN catch before half. I still trust this defense to be great. But I think a much bigger deal is the offense, and specifically Dak Prescott with Mike McCarthy, who I think is settling in as the offensive overseer here. Um, But, I mean, Dak Prescott in complete command of this offense, I think, with Burrow and Aaron Rodgers out of the picture this year, I think Dak Prescott is the best like field operator, the best you know surgeon of a quarterback in the league right now. Uh, you know, is yeah, here we go, cadence. Definitely gets annoying when you're watching a condensed broadcast and you got to hear that every five seconds. But hey, it's working for him. Um, just in his groove and a legitimate MVP type of season from Dak Prescott. A huge like next six weeks for Dak to get some big wins and then just you know this this playoffs couldn't be any bigger for like his legacy uh very excited to see where this goes for them but um 
Feel, feeling good about the Cowboys. And then the Eagles at number two, dropping out of the top tier after they got demolished by the 49ers. Uh, Eagles fans were, were big mad when I dropped them uh, last week, putting the Niners above them. Uh, look, man, Niners just better by a, a pretty significant margin. It's not even really a knock on the Eagles, who I still would take in a one-on-one -on -one matchup against everybody else. But what the Niners are doing right now, and I said it like week one when they went to Pittsburgh, it just looks and feels a little bit different. And it makes sense, right? You have this perfect marriage with everything here. And the timeline is just in sync right now. You have all of these superstar players assembled under contract. We talk about championship windows all the time. And you got Brock Purdy on the rookie contract, right? You, you get the opportunity to bring in a Chase Young. Um, you're able to keep the cap hits on guys like Nick Bosa and Kittle and Debo and Fred Warner under control as they're kind of front-loaded contracts. Now, where this goes in three years, who the hell knows? But this group is here now. They're pissed after how last season ended. They're the most well-coached team in the NFL by chance, you know, Kyle Shanahan just dialing up everything. They hit their losing streak that everybody likes to talk about. Look, they didn't have Trent Williams, who's their best player, and Debo Samuel, who's integral for the scheme, uh, the mix and matching that they do with Christian McCaffrey, uh, ties everything together, even if his own stat sheet isn't always crazy every week, even though it can be any given week. So when healthy, and they're healthy, this is not just the best team in the league this year. They're the best team in the league by a tier. And they're like an all-decade type of team. And I, I don't think I'm overreacting there. I think a lot of people agree there. I'm curious what you guys think in the comments. But, you know, this team has a chance to kind of just run through the playoffs and go down as... You remember like when the Legion of Boom beat the Broncos like by 40 in the Super Bowl and... That's, in my opinion, like an all-decade type of team. I really think this could be one of those all-decade types of teams that only comes around every five years or so. Um, so I'm enjoying watching them, and good luck to everybody else because it really does feel like you need luck to beat this team. You need some injuries to slow them down, or you need you know, random bounces of the ball to take these guys down. They are just boat racing teams right now. But that's going to do it for my Week 14 NFL Power Rankings. Uh, we're getting down the home stretch here now. We got just a few more of these until playoffs and draft season. It is, this thing flies by. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the Power Rankings throughout the season. I hope you have hit that like button. If you haven't yet, please do. And we'll see you soon. We got some more great content coming here on the channel. Make sure you sub for that. Let me know in the comments down below where you agree, where you disagree. Peace out.